In today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create this customized shape uh, with a, a vector wood texture going over it using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So let's close that out and get started. The first thing we'll do when we open up Inkscape is open up our Align and Distribute menu. Make sure you have Last Selected chosen from that dropdown. We'll go to Edit Objects, Colors, Gradients, and Stroke. And then from View, make sure you have Custom selected, and we'll go to Zoom, and we're going to zoom in at 1 to 1. So the first thing we'll do is we'll take our Bezier pen and click on that. And we're going to start, we're going to click on the canvas right here. And we're going to hold control and bring this line out to about here and then up, out to about here and then up maybe one step, kind of like that. And then click again and you can let go of control and you could hit enter on the keyboard and it's going to create that line. The next thing we'll do is we'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool. We'll click on that. We're going to take this line and pull this up kind of like this right here. Then we're going to click on this node right here and hold control on your keyboard and grab this handle and make sure that this is coming out at a straight horizontal line. It's not going up or down or slightly up like this. Hold control on the keyboard and drag this out straightward like that. And we'll do the same thing down here. We're going to hold control and click on this handle. Bring this one so it's coming out completely vertical or horizontal rather, just like that. And we'll bring that out to about here. I'm actually going to take this line. I'm actually going to hold control and drag this up a little bit. I want that to be a little taller. So we want to make it look kind of like that. And we can go to our arrow tool and click on that. And then with this selected, we'll go to path, stroke to path. And then we'll right click this and go to duplicate. And we'll flip this horizontally by clicking this button right here. Or alternative, alternatively, you could press H on your keyboard and that'll flip it horizontally. And then click and drag over both of them and align them, align the right edges of the objects together with this button right here, kind of like that. And it should put them together like that. And then we can go to Path Union, and unify them together. Now let's hold Control and Shift in the keyboard and scale this down a little bit. We don't need it that big. And then we're gonna take the Rectangles tool, and click on that, and we'll click and drag over this and create a rectangle going over this line. Now once you've created your rectangle, let's go to the opacity slider and let's bring the opacity of that down in half so we can see what we're doing. And let's turn that red for now. And let's go back to the arrow tool and let's lower this to the bottom with this button right here. Lower selection to the bottom. Click on that so it's below that line. And if you see how I created this rectangle here, you want to make it so it's slightly, slightly less wide than the line. And you want to make sure it's going over the top of this line like this. You don't want it down here. You want it above that line. So once you get there, let's click and drag over the whole thing and let's center it up on the vertical axis like that. Now we can click on this line and we can right click it and go to duplicate and we could flip it vertically by clicking this button up here or pressing V on your keyboard and then hold control and click and drag this line down to here just before it gets to the bottom of that rectangle right there. Then we could hold shift in the keyboard and click on that first line and let's unify them together by going to path union. And then we'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on this red rectangle and go to path difference. And then we can go to path break apart. And that's going to break that apart into three different pieces. So once you've done that, let's click this top piece and let's delete that by pressing delete on the keyboard. And do the same thing to this bottom piece. Click that, press delete on the keyboard. And then we can take this piece right here and let's hold control and shift. And let's scale this down a little bit. Now, I made a mistake in creating this. This is a little too thin for my liking. I'm going to make this a little taller. In order to do that, I'm going to go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and click on that. And I'm going to click and drag over this bottom portion of nodes right here so I select them all. And I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and click and drag these down to about here. Ideally you want this thing to be this height right here. And then we can go to our Create Circles and Ellipses tool. We click on that and we could hold Control and Shift and click and drag to create a perfectly round circle like that. And after we've done that we can click the arrow tool and we can take this circle 
and put this on the top left corner right here, right about there. Let me go right click this, go to duplicate, hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this off to the right over here so it's in roughly the same position. And then we can hold shift and click on the other one so we have them both selected. We'll right click that and go to duplicate and hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this down here so it's about in the same position down on the bottom. And then hold shift and click on the first two so we have all four of those circles selected. And we can go to path union. And then we can hold shift on the keyboard and click on our original red shape right here in the middle. And let's align that on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And with them still selected, let's go to path difference. And then we'll end up with the shape kind of like this. This is the shape we are intending to make here. What I'm going to do now is put a border around this shape in the shape of that shape. So in order to do that, I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. And I'm going to lower that to the bottom with this button right here. And I'm going to come to the stroke paint tab. I'm going to turn that on with the blue button. And I'm going to go to stroke style and I'm going to try out a 25 point stroke first. I'm going to type 25 and hit enter and see how that looks. Okay, that's pretty good. Once you get there, let's turn that into a path by going to path, stroke to path. And then we can, we, well, let's turn that green first so we can differentiate it. And then let's right click this and go to duplicate and let's lower that to the bottom and come back to the stroke paint tab and let's give that a stroke once again. And it should automatically default to a 25 point stroke or whichever number value you entered there previously. And once you've done that, we can go to path, stroke to path. And then let's zoom in on this left side of the shape right here. You could hold control on the keyboard and use the mouse wheel. Or you could press plus and minus on the keyboard. And that'll zoom you in as well. Now let's take this green shape right here and hold shift in the keyboard and then click on the black shape so you have them both selected and go to path difference and then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to the normal size and let's click and drag over this whole thing and let's bring the opacity on that all the way up and then let's take this shape right here let's bring that off to the side we got to get rid of that border on the inside we don't want that so for this, let's bring the opacity on that down. And let's go to path and break apart. And it's going to break that to a bunch of little pieces. And what we're going to do is click off of this to deselect everything. And let's click these two pieces in the middle and delete them. You click on them and press the delete key. And then once you get down to these last two pieces right here, click on the first one, hold shift, click on the one behind it. And let's go to path, difference. And then we can press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. And then we can turn the opacity on that all the way back up and hold shift in the keyboard and click on the red shape. We can center that up on the vertical and the horizontal axis. And let's turn that a dark shade of brown. So that's how you can create a customized shape with the border around it using Inkscape. What I'm gonna do now as an added effect, I'm gonna give this a vector wooden texture. And I'm gonna do that by importing a raster image of a piece of wood. And I've provided a link to that in the description. If you go to that link and save the image into a folder where you can easily access it, once you've done that, we can go to File, Import. We could find that image. It should be wood2.png. Click on that to import it. We want to have embed selected. Click OK. Now let's bring this off to the side. And let's play with that a little bit. I'm going to press it down on the mouse wheel so I can pan the page over like that. Or you could just use the arrows, I mean the, um, the sliders on the side and bottom of the, of the, uh, the page here. Um, once we have that selected, let's go to Path and let's go to Trace Bitmap. And from this menu, we're gonna select Color Quantization. And let's bring the colors all the way down to two. And let's press Update so we can get a preview of what that's gonna look like. Okay, as you can see in this preview menu, it's not showing anything. So we got to try color, uh, try using three colors and then press update. And as you can see now, it's created uh, a vector tracing of this wood texture right here. However, it's going to create uh, a vector object that uh, goes 
negative to the uh, vector object we want. So what we're going to do is click on Invert Image and click Update. And what I just said will make more sense once you see this. That's what we want right there. We want these shapes, this pattern in the texture to become the vector object. So once this looks like this on your preview menu, go ahead and click OK. And this may take a minute. And then you'll see it creates a black vector image on top of that piece of wood. Now let's close out of this menu. We don't need that anymore. And let's take this vector graphic and move this up to the side. And let's click on our original raster image of the piece of wood. And let's press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. We're done with that. Now what we've done here is we've taken a piece of wood, we've taken a, a, a raster image of a piece of wood and created a vector texture out of it. And I'm going to show you what I mean right here. If we go to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool, you can see this is a vector graphic that we can manipulate accordingly. So I'm going to go back and zoom out. And I'm going to hold Shift in the keyboard and click on this piece in the middle. And I'm going to center that up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then click off of the graphic to deselect everything. Now let's click on just the piece of wood texture right here and hold Control and Shift. And let's scale this down so it's just a little bigger than that shape in the middle there. We want this to be about, about that big. And then we can press Shift and Alt on the keyboard and click again so that it selects that, wood, that, uh, that brown shape in the center. And with them both selected, let's go to Path and Difference. And you can see we're pretty much done now. You can use this as a button or uh, you know some kind of um, piece for a logo or whatever else you'd like to use it for. So if you have any questions, just let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.